Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That, I, that is I. And I've got with me today Thomas Bear from the Atheist Community of Austin. We are going to discuss something that is dear to your heart, Thomas. Uh, we're going to discuss Atheist Day. Uh, so welcome, Thomas. I'm glad you're on my show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so I met you, oh gosh, maybe a year ago or so? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less. First yeah. started coming up here and getting involved with the ACA last September. Okay. Great, great. And uh, you were very instrumental in the Atheist Day last year. So we do want to get into that. But first, I always like to the viewers to hear uh, guest stories, their deconversion story, their upbringing, and so forth. So tell us a little bit about Thomas Bear, your upbringing, and so forth. Well, as I said, I grew up in the Methodist Church. I uh, went to church camp every year all the way through my senior year. Uh, after church, after high school, I uh, was in and out of church, but mostly out. The only time that I did go was if it was a particularly low point in my life or a girlfriend I was going out with at the time. <laughs> so it wasn't really that religious. My, growing, up, my, growing up, my household wasn't super religious. We went to church every Sunday, but I don't know. I think it might have been more than a habit than yeah. anything else. Yeah. Uh, I had some questions and doubts early on when I was a kid. And I always got these uh, BS answers and non-answers such as, you know, God works in mysterious ways or who are we to question the Lord yeah. or who are we to question the pastor and stuff like that. And as a little kid, you know, I, I guess those were enough answers. You know, I dismissed it, you know, I didn't think of it more until later years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. As I got on probably in my, I guess my, in my early, 20, early mid-20s <clears throat> is when I, really started to realize that religion was all a bunch of baloney. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, I'd started, I'd gone back to another church for a while cause, thinking that maybe that was the, God was the answer. I was going to try that yeah. route again. And what I realized was I wasn't looking for a relationship with God. I was looking for a relationship with other people, that yeah. community. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of the questions I had when I was younger came back, and my questions only grew deeper and more numerous and still got the same crappy, you know, non-answers. Yeah. So I started learning more reading on myself and eventually just came to realize that all religion was BS. It was all man-made. Yeah. yeah. Interesting that you said, and this is what a lot of people say, that, that you were looking for more than just this uh, transcendentalistic, mm-hmm. uh, invisible guy in the sky, right? You were right. looking for relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what people, I think a lot of people are in religion for. So uh, I agree. Yeah, they so let's talk about... don't realize it. Absolutely. Yeah, they really don't realize it. And that's why it's up to us to help those people, too. You right. know? Um, so tell us a little bit about what happened last year. You had this idea and uh, of having Atheist Day here in Austin. That was the first, if I recall, it yes. was our first Atheist Day yes. in Austin. So tell us how you got the that idea. Was, well, the, actual, the International Atheist Day... <clears throat> I was the brainchild of Armin Navabi. Uh, he's the founder of Atheist Republic, uh, which is, non- uh, which is a, uh, another nonprofit organization. Up until recently, he was j- it was just uh, in Canada that they were recognized as a nonprofit, but they just recently got their nonprofit status here in the States as well. Okay. And uh, I've seen online about it a couple times, and so I approached and I asked Jamie, I think it was Jamie and Eric who I asked, uh, Murphy to begin with. Mm-hmm. Uh, do y'all know about this? Uh, are we doing anything for this here in Austin? And the answer was no, we don't. I mean, they'd heard a little bit about it, but nothing detailed. And so they basically gave me the ball rolling to try to get something going for it here in Austin. Yeah. And so I contacted uh, Aaron Ra because I'd met my first Sunday here last September. I'd met him. He was here. <laughs> I was so shocked and surprised at meeting Aaron Ra. I was trying to talk to him and shake his hand. I'm like, uh, 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 oh. uh. All stuttering. <laughs> and then you just found out we're all human, right? Right. We're all just people, yeah. 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 He's so down to earth. He's he really an awesome is. guy. Yeah. But uh, from there, I just started uh, making calls and, well, not really calls, contacting through Facebook, uh, people that I'd made contact with through ACA. If they hadn't been for here, it wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And uh, that was a pretty good turnout last year, if I recall. Yeah, it, it blew our expectations clean out of the water. We, I think we were expecting like maybe 75 or so people, and I think the rough final count was around 150 or so for the main event. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure how many were here at the second 
the, or the second event afterwards. We had Seth Andrews speak for that. Oh, I didn't know you had a second event. I remember the um, – where we were at the Capitol. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were on the south lawn of the Capitol. I got that reserved. Uh, and that was a lot easier than I thought it would be getting there. I just I Googled to find out, you know, reserving Capitol space and found out who to contact, what forms to fill out, and so on, and got support from um, – Oh, I can't remember her name now. One of our state representatives. Mm. Uh, so I'm drawing a blank. That's okay. That's okay. So. And so, was this particular representative secular herself? Do you? I don't know. If, I don't know if she herself is uh, secular or atheist, but she's secular friendly. Okay, so. that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I thought it was a great uh, success last year, and it's really just awesome. I think we should probably be doing this more often. Now, were there a lot of other groups in the state or the country that were doing this as well? Um, I was told there were some, but I don't remember. I'm not sure where. Uh, I only know of a few that uh, he was told me of. And, uh, Armand, uh, I talked to him that day. I got put in contact with him by Drew McCoy, uh, okay. genetically modified atheist. Mm-hmm. And uh, he told me that uh, Austin, our, our event was one, if not the biggest, it was one of the biggest events wow. that he knew of. Wow! Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a long ordeal that day, <laughs> and we only planned it. And we had about two, two and a half months short, real short notice, and so it was. I was very surprised at how well it went. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. So tell me about your goals, Thomas Bear. What do you want to accomplish through this 2020 Atheist Day here in Austin? Uh, well, for one, I expect you know I expect us to have a, uh, a bigger crowd than we did this last this year. Uh, this year we've uh, got the South Steps uh, reserved to the Cape State Capitol instead of the lawn, so it's a bigger area, bigger platforms, a little bit up higher up. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll I'm pretty sure we'll have a larger turnout. I've got quite a few people I'm in contact with online that are already uh, expressed interest in coming to it. Uh, a few that are that came this year and are planning to come back. Uh, one of my friends, Rob, is from New York. Mm. He was planning on coming again. And I was I was pleasantly surprised. And I got to meet about half a dozen or so people that I knew prior to that through Facebook, you know, digitally or Twitter. Yeah. And I got to meet them in person. And I made about that many new friends also. Mm. So I made a lot of connections. But see, you were looking for that. You were yeah. looking for friendship and and a community, yeah. and you found that. And the whole purpose of the Atheist Day to begin with, Armand's purpose was to is for it to be a day of solidarity among, for and amongst atheists worldwide, to uh, include those that are coming out atheists, or especially those who are being persecuted or discriminated against in any way. You know, and there's a lot of that out in the world too, with a lot of atheists that you know face death. You know, it's really sad. Yeah, definitely. But that's what the Atheist Day is all about. So it's be, you know a day of support and a day of solidarity. Yeah, that's important, know? isn't it, to have that solidarity in right. in our different groups. And the secondary goal, I think, of, uh, is also to try to combat the negative stereotypes that you know are placed on atheists. You know, we have no morals, this and that and the other. You know, so it's, that's also a part to try to combat that. And like, hey, we're just normal people. We're like everybody else. We just don't believe in, in you know, there's a God because there's no evidence for it. Absolutely. That's a great answer. It's like the little story you told me before when we were talking about the lady in the in the grocery store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to share that? That was kind oh, of Oh, sure. Uh, one of my first uh, designs I made, a uh, shirt that I ordered for myself, had a kind of reddish fiery background with the athe- atomic atheist symbol on it. Explain what that is, the atomic atheist. Yeah, the atomic. I, well, you got the regular atheist A. You know, it's just the cut, the circle around it. Yeah. And the atomic atheist A is the same thing, only it forms the atomic symbol. It oh, okay. forms part of the curves for that. Okay. And uh, anyway, this old lady, I'd say she was probably late sixties, early seventies, asked me what the, what that was in my shirt, what that meant. Yeah. And I told her, oh, it's this, you know, symbol for atheism. And she, her reaction was like, oh, oh. And she turned real quick to her groceries and tried to ignore me. And uh, I just chuckled. And when I got my groceries, I went off and said, have a good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. She still wouldn't look me in the eye. Uh, no, we got a long way to go. But it's yeah. we're getting there. And the more of us that come out, uh, yeah. it's always beneficial for the movement and for humanity as a whole. Right. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, let's talk about the 2020 
Uh, what are your plans? How many speakers? And is there a, do you have a theme? Do you, are you the one that comes up with what each speaker will be talking about? Do you give a no. topic or a premise? or No. Uh, just, just like this year, we left it pretty much open to them, uh, but told them, you know, tell them what the day was intended for you know, and let them speak about who they were, what they do, and why they do it, you know, along those lines. Uh, I said we've got the state capital uh, steps, South Steps Reserve this year. It's a larger area. I'm not sure exactly how many uh, speakers we'll have. Probably somewhere around 10, give or so. We had mm -hmm. 10 speakers this last year, mm -hmm. uh, this year. And uh, all the details of the rest on who we have, uh, pretty much it's still up in the air at this point right now. We just barely started to get ready for it. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of marketing will you be doing for this? Oh, for Facebook, of course, and, you know, through the social marketing. Uh, I think Jamie has, has some other ideas for getting for press releases and stuff like that. I'm not sure exactly, though. Good. So we're just now getting this really started, so we don't have a whole lot of details yet, unfortunately. It's exciting to be involved in a grassroots movement, isn't it? Yes, yes. I see you're involved. Yeah. One of my, uh, I've said this for a while, one, one of the better ways to live is to try to live for something bigger than yourself, to be a part of something bigger than yourself, especially something that, you know, can affect positive change, even if it's just on a local level. So. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. But, he just took my sermon away from me. <laughs> that was a good one. Hit the nail on the head, yeah. Um, and would you think this is something that will continue throughout the years and you hope for it to grow? And to I expand? believe it will. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, so tell the viewers where and do you have a particular day yet or is this to be announced? Well, the actual day that Armand and I chose was March 23rd, and that's the day we had it this year. Uh, what day of the week is good, that going to be? Uh, well, for 2020, it's a Monday. Okay. Uh, so we're planning on having a main event on that Saturday instead, which is uh, so it could be larger, a larger number of people will be able to attend, you know, from being off work and all. And I think we have a, we'll have a second event on Monday, the actual day. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't have any other further details yet at this time. We've been talking, I've talked, I've reached out to Aaron Ra, uh, Medisa Thomas. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Westbrook yeah. is interested in uh, participating again. And uh, Andrew Sedell, possibly, if his schedule allows for it. And uh, I'm also trying to get Jerry Reed. Uh, he's also a former uh, preacher, like yourself. You know, I'm not, Bible Belt atheist. atheist. Yeah. Oh, you should look I'm him up sometime, Jerry yeah, Reed. I, I've never, I normally keep up with former preachers that are now atheists and secular humanist activists. Uh, I haven't heard of him, but I'll definitely check him out. Yeah. yeah. I made friends with him sometime back on you know, Facebook, and then uh, what made me think of him for try to get him for Atheist Day was uh, here a couple months ago. It was actually from a couple years, I think it was from 2017, but it was a uh, New York Times uh, op doc, uh, or uh, some, what do they call it? Some, it was a, a post <clears throat> New York Times uh, video documentary, and it featured him, the Bible Belt, Bible Belt Atheist. Okay, uh, Jerry DeWitt? Yes, Jerry DeWitt. Yeah. I have never met him, but I've read some of his stuff, and he, he does some great work. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm really looking forward to Atheist Day 2020 coming up, and I hope we so really have a good turnout. And I want to thank you, Thomas, for the laying the groundwork, uh, the foundation for this, and all the hard work you've done. Thank you very much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And those of us that do public speaking, and we have YouTube shows, and we're out there, we could never do anything without all of the many people like yourself. And, of course, the folks in that back room, Mark Vanderbrick right. and the others, right, all the producers and audio-video people, and all the behind-the-scenes people that do so much work. So thank you very much for taking the initiative, uh, the time, um, and all the work that you've done to do this, because this is so important. Um, and I hope this continues to grow, and it'll encourage others to get out of the closet and come out and uh, let the light shine, right? right. <laughs> so thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate Thank you. it. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot for watching The Preaching Humanists. Take care. Bye-bye.